Hi guys, welcome back to the third video in our tutorial series on RabbitMQ. In the last video, we installed RabbitMQ both on Windows and using the community Docker image. In this image, we're gonna look at some of the core concepts and terminology of RabbitMQ. It's very important to understand what these different things are before we start writing our RabbitMQ programs. So there are lots of terms that are thrown around when talking about RabbitMQ. These include broker, exchange, queues, producers. And we really need to understand what they are and how they interact before we can really understand how to use RabbitMQ. RabbitMQ itself is often called a message broker. If we compare this broker to a real life example, we might think of the broker kind of like the postal service. It's a service that's responsible for getting our letters from A to B in the same way that RabbitMQ is responsible for getting our messages from consumer to producer. We also have the ideas of producers and consumers in RabbitMQ. A producer is something that is publishing a message into RabbitMQ. In the post office example, we can think of a producer as someone who is posting a letter. They just want to drop the letter off safe in the knowledge it will get to its final destination. The message broker, or in the postal example, the postal service, knows how to forward our messages to its final destination. When we drop off a message in the post office, we don't need to hang around all day to make sure that our message gets delivered. Instead, we can go about our day safe in the knowledge that the postal service will take care of this for us. And if we receive a reply, it will come into our letterbox. We don't need to go back to the post office every single day to check if anything has arrived for us. The same is true in RabbitMQ, and this is what's known as a synchronous communication. Synchronous communication will be something like making a HTTP GET request for a web-based API. We would have to wait around until the API responds and often can't do anything until it does. This can end up eating a lot of resources in our system. We then also have consumers, which are the entities or programs listening to messages that come off the message broker. We can have multiple consumers listening to messages off the message broker, and we can also have multiple producers pushing messages into the same message broker. Both ways the communication is asynchronous, which means producers don't have to wait for messages to be delivered and consumers don't have to wait until messages get sent. But to understand how the message broker gets a message from producer to consumer, we will have to look at exchanges and queues to see how they fit into our system. An exchange is the brains behind RabbitMQ. It knows how we want to route our message from producer to consumer. We can think of an exchange like the inner workings of the postal service. Say, for instance, like a single postal office. Once it gets a letter, it looks at the address or any other metadata and makes decisions on how to proceed and who gets the letter. There are many different types of exchanges to cover many different types of scenarios. Just like the way the postal service has many different types of post office that offer many different types of services, such as express post, registered post, or even a service that posts a letter to multiple people. A message broker might have many different exchanges, and an exchange is what a producer always sends its messages to. The other core concept is that of a queue. An exchange will push messages into one or more queues. Message will sit in these queues until they are read or consumed by an interested party. We might think of a queue kind of like our letterbox. It might receive multiple envelopes or messages into it throughout the day. We might check it from time to time and read those messages, or we might leave them there to build up over time. A consumer is responsible for reading the messages in its queue the same way a person is responsible for opening the letters in its letterbox. Like an exchange, a message broker might have multiple queues. Queues are tied to exchanges in what is known as a binding. An exchange can be tied to many queues, and also a queue can be tied to many exchanges. In this example, we can see that some queues are tied to a single exchange, but other queues are tied to multiple exchanges. We might even have the case where a queue is tied to no exchanges. In this case, the queue will not receive any messages from a producer. Consumers listen to messages that are pushed onto queues. Again, a consumer might not listen to any messages or might listen to messages from multiple queues. In this case, we can see that our first consumer consumes off three different queues, but the second only consumes off one. 
With different types of exchanges and using bindings and queues, RabbitMQ gives us a lot of flexibility in how we set up our message broker. We can duplicate messages by sending them from an exchange onto multiple queues, or we can make sure only one queue ever gets a message from an exchange. Two other terms that might be mentioned frequently in the context of RabbitMQ are connections and channels. Every producer or consumer should open a single TCP connection to our RabbitMQ broker. A connection, however, can have multiple channels. By using a connection with multiple channels, a producer, for example, might be able to produce and push messages onto our message broker using different threads. But because each thread uses a different channel, these messages are isolated from one another. By using channels and not opening multiple connections, we can save a lot of resources. The same is true for consumers who will only have one connection but might have multiple channels. If you're enjoying these videos on RabbitMQ, don't forget to give them a like and subscribe to the channel.